a, a, a now a year and a half, two years ago, I did a um, I did a mystery shopper report on 500 of the top e-commerce brands with Simpler.ai, which is uh, which is outsourced customer service company, and they. Uh, with the with the data we found, we saw that 65% of e-commerce brands have live chat on their website. But when we dove in a little bit deeper, we found that only 8% of brands would actually answer a question in real time. And of the ones that didn't answer a question in real time, it was just leading to email. Uh, it was basically an email form, and it was leading to a negative user experience, costing brands tens of thousands of dollars because these are like major brands. They're doing millions of dollars in revenue. It was like a clear problem. Fast forward just a few months after that is when I met John here. And John is like uh, a visionary in the sense that he knew years before I'd figured this out that live chat leads to revenue. <laughs> and so he built an agency to serve merchants in a way that makes a lot of sense because it's, it's very scalable for you as the merchant to engage with John. And you can't always ex execute on this on your own. And because he has the expertise in actually closing the sales and training his team on how to perform live chat, especially I think for you, John, it's on the cart page and checkout page, right? Especially because um, that's where people are most likely to buy. Uh, he's been able to just prove and increase revenue and from uh, just by engaging people, answering questions, really basic stuff, uh, but hard to do in real time. And, and I think um, he's learned so much from that and he's about to share it with us today. Again, number one thing I'm most passionate about in all of e-commerce is live chat before the sale. Uh, so John, I'm really excited to have you. Awesome. Awesome. I'll, I'm way into live chat before the sale too. I'm, I'm more biased than you, but um, what, I, <laughs> what I want to dig into is, is really like the conversion side of chat. Uh, Derek, I appreciate you bringing us in, uh, bringing us in on this event. Um, that's what I'm going to focus on today is basically how to maximize conversions with live chat. Yes, we do this as a service for people, but you can apply everything that I'm going to talk about today uh, in house with your own team. And you absolutely should. Um, the challenge that I want to start with though is paid traffic, which might not be, you know, really um, connected uh, to live chat, at least in your mind. But if you think about it, paid traffic is, is super, super expensive. There is a reason why Google and Facebook are Google and Facebook. Um, they generate massive dollars. Uh, from brands just like you guys that basically pay to buy customers on the platform. And, you know, ROAS return on ad spend might be profitable for you. Um, you know, maybe 2x, 3x, 4x, that's pretty, pretty healthy. Um, even though you might be able to make paid traffic work, if you start to really get granular and track abandons, so people that, you know, get to the site and then leave, people that get to a product page and then leave, people that add something to their cart and then leave. Basically anybody that comes to the site does something but doesn't end up actually buying. If you start to track that, you'll realize that that is a massive cost in the business. And one of the things that if you look into your actual funnel, what you'll start to see is a massive amount of checkouts that start the checkout end up abandoning. And so based on what we see, 50% of checkouts, sometimes 70% of checkouts or add to carts uh, end up abandoning, but a massive percentage of those can actually abandon very deep in the checkout process. Uh, so I'm talking about the shipping page. I'm talking about the payment page, like literally the last step. And so if you start to really run numbers on abandons, um, you'll see that that is a massive amount of, of leaking revenue. You're absolutely never going to get all of it to be clear. Um, but getting even small percentages of different cohorts can, can be massive numbers. Um, I'm going to refer to this store as we go through um, for some data so you guys can see kind of all of this stuff in action. Uh, this is a clothing store. They sell apparel. It's kind of specialized apparel, but um, you know, it's, it's a, a basic apparel store, I'll say. Um, they do a lot of sales though. And I intentionally chose a store that does a lot of revenue. They do 900K a month for this particular time period. Um, and the reason why I wanted to cho choose that store is I wanted the law, the law of large numbers to work with us, right? So I wanted to make sure that all of this data was super valid. Um, and so you could be able to apply it to a wide range of sites. But to be clear, the numbers I'm going to talk through, they all scale down to. So if you're doing 100K a month, 40K a month, 150 a month, anywhere around that, um, you're going to see the same type of ratios that I'm going to talk about. Uh, another key thing I want you to notice, I don't have a zoomed in part on this particular part of the slide, but notice the site-wide conversion rate. They're driving a ton of traffic. I think I have that on the next slide. 
and they're converting almost three and a half percent of those. So three and a half percent of everybody that comes to the site is converting. Um, average order value, almost 50 bucks, $48. Um, so this is by, by all accounts, a super, super healthy e-com store. But if we start to look at the abandons, you'll see that that is also big, big numbers. So in this particular case, this is a week of data. There's a reason why I'm using this view of Google Analytics, by the way, rather than uh, the funnel view, uh, the checkout view. So I'll get to that in a second because this allows me to slice and dice it a little bit more. But what you're seeing here, 10,500 people per week start their checkout process, but don't move in, uh, don't actually end up completing the purchase process. And if you dig deeper, this is where we want to start to slice and dice that data. So 10,500 people per week abandon the checkout process. That's 42,000 people per month. Um, again, this is a big store, uh, but 42,000 people per month start the checkout, but don't abandon. When you dig one step deeper, that second row that you see on the screen, 6,566 people, that's the number of weekly people that abandon on the payment page. So basically what you're seeing is, you know, 10,500 people uh, per week start checkout, but abandon. 60% of those abandon on the credit card screen, literally the last step of the checkout process. And with, with uh, you know, this particular site's average order values and their economics, it's $1.2 million per month of people just on the payment page. And so what I really want you to take away from this, uh, this section is that people abandon, but it's people that abandon really late in the purchase process that are just insanely low hanging fruit, like fruit that's on the ground, but still ripe, ready to eat, ready to go. It's the easiest, uh, easiest lever that you can pull as far as conversions. Um, so again, this is a big store, but if you look at your own numbers, either in Google analytics, or if you pull some of the data out of Shopify, you're going to see somewhere around 50% of checkouts abandoned. You're going to see somewhere around 50% of those abandoned on the payment page. And what I want to help you to do is to see how you can save these because it's possible to save a ton of these. Most of you are probably using cart abandonment strategies. Um, and, and if you're not, you absolutely should. But, you know, the most common one is simple abandoned cart emails, right? Um, basically sending an email to somebody uh, that filled in enough information for you to get their email um, to bring them back to buy. Um, quick side note, I'm going to show you something later uh, in the session, like probably three quarters of the way through. Um, on how to really supercharge conversions from these emails. Because if you're just doing the emails, that's good. It's better than nothing. Um, but there's a couple things you can do uh, by tweaking those emails to get a lot more sales from them. Um, second thing that, uh, that a lot of stores do and you should definitely be doing is retargeting ads, right? So basically retargeting people that abandoned and in a perfect world, showing them the product that they uh, abandoned with, but at a minimum, just trying to bring them back uh, to basically get them to buy. But both of these, right, card abandonment emails, uh, retargeting ads, and, and even other stuff that you can do, there's other things. These don't address why they abandoned in the first place. It might have the product, it might have an offer, uh, you might discount something down because you think it was too expensive or something, um, but it doesn't address why someone abandoned. Most of the time people abandon because something is holding them back. They have a question that they're not sure of. And regardless of what you do with your website copy or your return policies or those types of things, um, those questions need to be addressed in order to actually uh, get a big chunk of those people to buy. Um, live chat can be a killer way to do that. Most people, and again, you can do all of this on your own, but most people think of live chat as a customer service tool. Uh, I want to walk you through some of these numbers to kind of reframe that for you. Uh, but most people think of live chat as a customer service tool and, and honestly, like a pretty expensive customer service tool at that. Um, running customer service on live chat can be very expensive if, if you're not careful and like uh, strategic with how you do it of basically multiple chats and kind of routing chats carefully and a whole bunch of stuff that might be good for another session. Um, but it's not primarily a customer service tool with live chat. Um, it can be used to drive massive numbers uh, of conversions throughout the entire purchase process if you use it really strategically. And so again, looking at this particular uh, example site, they're losing 26,000 people per month just on the payment page. So 26,000 people per month just on the payment page. They convert three and a half percent of everybody on the site right? Cold traffic, warm traffic, everything. And a lot of this is cold traffic to be transparent. Three and a half percent is what they convert of everyone. If you can convert a small number of people from that payment page, 26,000, it turns into big, big numbers. With the payment page, 
projecting 7% of those payment page abandons, being able to convert 7% of those turns into 88 grand a month in incremental revenue. So it's big dollars. And I wanna be crystal clear, you're not gonna convert 7% of like these other cohorts I'm gonna show you of like product page visitors and you know, much colder visitors, but 7% of the payment page abandons, they've gotten all the way to the end, they selected the product, they, uh, they entered their shipping information, they entered their contact information, they may have even entered their payment information, uh, but they didn't you know, get through the next page absolutely reasonable. It's basically double the site-wide conversion rate. And on a site like this, absolutely makes sense. I think it would be closer to 10% based on what we see, which is even bigger numbers, but 7%, very conservative. It's 88 grand a month of additional revenue. That's a million dollars a year for this store. Um, so big dollars at stake. At Hopeflow, what we do is we run 24 seven live chat teams for over a hundred e-commerce stores. Our agents actually run the chat and answer visitors questions. Uh, we've done it for hundreds of sites, millions of chats over the last six years. Um, we've drove nearly $100 million in chat revenue uh, for a, a wide range of e-commerce stores, all types of different brands. Um, but again, I want to be clear, you don't have to work with us to drive these types of results. Uh, I'm going to walk you through some tactics that you can use um, you know, in your own sites to be able to drive results like this. So what I want to focus on is, is really three places uh, where live chat fits in. Um, live chat should absolutely be used on the entire site, uh, to be clear, but there's really like three big levers where that, that you can pull to drive a lot of sales. And, and that's basically in the checkout process, which I went over a little bit. I'm going to get a little more tactical in the next couple slides, uh, product and category pages. So people that are super engaged in the, in the product, but not moving into checkout for some reason. Uh, and then the third one is email flows. So making uh, live chat part of your cart abandonment emails, part of your life cycle emails, all of that. I'll dig into that in a second. So I'll touch on uh, some of the specifics of the checkout process. Um, the goal here at a high level is basically to predict if somebody's going to abandon and then engage automatically before they abandon. So predict they're going to abandon and then be there before they abandon. And I'm not talking about exit intents or, you know, anything like that. That stuff kind of works, but by that point, they're already like mentally abandoned. They're, they're on their way out. Uh, you want to be a little more methodical than that. What you can do is engage with somebody when it looks like they're going to abandon. Something like this is a question that's going to come up of like, you know, uncertainty around shipping times or risk reversals for like guarantees and things like that. Um, but let me explain a bit about like how to do that prediction, right? Because predicting abandon is, is clear, uh, but how to do it's a little bit, little bit complicated. Um, what we do and what you can do as well is basically in Google Analytics, filter down to people that abandon. So basically uh, do a segment that says uh, people that, you know, got into checkout, but did not complete the checkout, the same cohort I showed you a second ago. Um, and then start looking at some of the patterns of the data. So how long do those, that, those cohorts, those people that abandon, how long do they spend on certain pages? Uh, how many products do they look at before they move into the checkout process? Um, how far into the checkout process do they get? Uh, some other things we look at a little deeper is velocity through the checkout process. So basically if somebody starts to slow down in the checkout process, you know, that's a sign. Um, basically what you're trying to do is, is predict that somebody's going to abandon to keep it simple though, rather than getting too hung up on like the, the actual algorithm and model of like how to predict it, um, at scale, it, it moves a lot more numbers if you get the prediction right, but at a minimum, have the chat in the checkout. And if somebody spends more than the average amount of time on each page in the checkout, uh, that's the time when you should look at potentially uh, inviting them. At that point, basically you're inviting them to chat, spark up a discussion. The wording of the invite doesn't matter that much. I'm gonna to touch on some of that at the end of the session. Um, but bottom line, you wanna basically invite them to chat when it looks like they're gonna abandon. Um, to be clear, in Shopify, you have to be on Shopify Plus to do this directly in the checkout process. But if you're not on plus, you can still do it when somebody leaves the checkout process. It's not as good as doing it in the checkout process. But what we've noticed is the vast majority of abandons, I'm talking like 85, 90% of abandons don't actually leave when they're in the checkout uh, section. They click the back button to get out of the checkout section and then they leave the site. And I, I think psychologically, the reason for that is, is something to do with like, if I leave my credit card info on the screen, like they might accidentally charge me. I think there's some, some element of that. Uh, but bottom line, if you don't have plus, when somebody clicks that back button, they end up back on your site. So they were in checkout, but then they end up back on the site. 
you can trigger the chat invite based on that. So bottom line, predict when someone's going to abandon and invite them to chat. Uh, separate from conversions, these chat conversations can be absolute gold to uh, basically improve the overall flow of the site, your FAQs, your product pages, all that types of stuff. Um, I won't go into that in, in this session, but um, definitely something to look at. The, the conversations are uh, really a window into the minds of your customer. So that's the checkout process, right? Predict when they're going to abandon and be there a step or two before they abandon, right? Um, second cohort is people that are super engaged in the product. They're very interested. They're doing the equivalent of walking up and down the aisle in a brick and mortar store like, like people used to, uh, and they're not buying for some reason. That's another cohort. So example site here, this is not a client of ours, but I thought it'd be a good example. I just like the way their navigation is. It's a very considered purchase. And so I think it's, it's a good example. But uh, these guys basically uh, sell plans to build a house, houseplans.com. Um, so somebody goes to the homepage, searches for plans. I'm trying to do a three bedroom, two bath, you know, with a garage or something, right? They do their filter. They land on search results like this. Uh, and then they start to maybe filter it down by various items. So maybe they change the number of bedrooms. Maybe they change the number of square feet. Maybe they change the style, beach bungalow, that type of stuff. But they're basically filtering down all these different products. What you can do is you can basically track very easily time on page. That's super simple. Uh, scroll depth is a little more complicated to do, but you can do it with Google Tag Manager. Not that hard. If you Google it, there's just a couple settings you add in there. But what you want to do is you want to find people that are super engaged based on that type of behavior and find the ones that are not moving into the uh, product page. They're not actually clicking through to products, or at least they're not staying on product pages. And again, invite those people to chat. That way you can help them find something that really matches their vision for their home in this case. Uh, but even if you're selling apparel, finding something that, you know, really uh, aligns with the design or style that they're trying to do. So find people that are super engaged and invite them to chat. If they do get on the product page, then what you want to do in that particular case uh, is basically find people that are really engaged in the product and invite them to chat. And so some of the things you can look at there is uh, if they're really engaged in, uh, you know, the attributes that you have related to your product. For clothing, super, super simple. Uh, at least on Shopify, when you have different sizes of products and different colors of products, those are uh, those all change the URL with a variant. So if you click on those, it'll basically tweak the URL to be a different variant number. That's all super, super simple to track. Uh, you can track scroll depth again, like I mentioned, something like this. Uh, I don't have a screenshot of this, but if you scroll down the page, it's got the floor plan on one tab. It's got, um, I think it's got the, the, I forget what it's called, the elevations, different views of the house from different angles. Um, so it's got those types of things. You can track that type of activity. Uh, but bottom line, what you're trying to do here is find people that are engaged, but not moving into the cart. Or if you sell a higher ticket product, maybe they're not saving the product. Um, this particular store drives a lot of people to save something to their wish list or lookbook, I think is what they call it. Um, but basically save, uh, save the item to their, their wish list. Um, if somebody doesn't do that, you can invite them to chat in that particular case. So again, super engaged product uh, visitors. You can move a ton of sales forward like this. Um, going back to the site that we talked about, so this is back to the clothing site. Uh, they get 103,000 visitors per week to the site. 42,000 of those view at least one product but don't move into the checkout process, um, which is here, that's that 42,000 number. But this is really the one uh, where you need to dig a little deeper. And so this last row is a number of people that viewed multiple products, but didn't move into the checkout. You want to slice and dice your data a little bit to, to measure like true engagement. Um, if you're just looking at people that viewed a product, but didn't move into the checkout, that might be enough. If you have a narrow skew, uh, skew set of like, you know, not a ton of products or not a lot of variations of products. Um, but typically you want to, uh, filter down by people that viewed two or more products. Um, you can also get a, a lot more crazy with it to say, okay, people that clicked on this type of attribute that you know is super relevant to your, your customers, but that's a little more ninja than I think we need to get today. So in this particular case, what I want to call out though is 88% of the people that view uh, a product but don't move into checkout view multiple products. That, that third row is 88% of the people that view a product. And you can save a small portion of these. It's nowhere near the amount from checkout. It's not that high intent, but it is intent that sets people apart. And so if we look at these numbers, um, there's basically uh, 148,000 people 
per month that view multiple products. They're super engaged, but they're not moving in uh, to the actual checkout process. And remember, the store is converting three and a half percent of everyone, 3.47%, I think, um, of everyone, cold traffic, Facebook ads, everything. Converting 1.25%, which is basically half of the site-wide conversion rate, absolutely reasonable from a projection perspective. I think it's gonna be a little bit higher, but, but I try to be a little more conservative on, on this type of number because you, sometimes you don't know. Uh, your ads might be really good and just have a ton of engagement and then you know people show up and go, oh, these are cool products, but then they leave. So when you're kind of trying to build projections on this stuff, you wanna be a little conservative with this cohort, but basically half of the site-wide conversion rate turns into 1,800 orders a month, 1,856, another million dollars a year of revenue, 89,000 for this one, we had 88,000, I think, in checkout. Um, it's a million dollars per cohort. And again, law of big numbers is a big side. I totally get it. But in your particular case, you're going to be able to drive massive dollars by engaging with people that are clearly interested. So name of the game on this cohort is find people that are super interested that aren't moving into checkout and just help them. And uh, you'll get a, a good number of them to move into checkout. Not all of them, but you don't need all of them to generate massive dollars. Third part is email flows. And most people don't think of like live chat as something to improve your cart abandonment emails, or they don't equate like live chat to Clavio, for example. Um, but you can like supercharge the results that you get out of your cart uh, abandonment emails and even other emails um, by, by integrating live chat in there. And so for cart abandonment emails, most stores are using some sort of variation of reminder, discount, Hail Mary discount, some sort of variation of that. Day one reminder, day two discount, day four or five or whatever the number is, Hail Mary discount, right? Um, that again, doesn't factor in that people abandon due to questions. There's questions that cause people to not buy. And so your discount might just lower the importance of that question where it's like, ah, oh, I'm getting 30% off, like maybe I'll just buy it. Um, but your returns will be pretty rough if those questions still weren't addressed when the product arrives. What you can do is basically add live chat as a call to action in those emails. And so basically what that enables you to do is rather than just reminding or discounting or all those types of things in the email, you add a secondary call to action. It's usually not primary, uh, but a secondary call to action that basically says, you know, we're online 24 seven or we're online right now, you know, chat with us if you have any questions. And what they do is they click that email that takes them back to the website, just like a normal abandoned card email. The order is already there and they're able to basically uh, answer those questions with the live chat agent. And the chat box automatically opens up. You just tag the link, it's super, super simple. But basically they end up back on the site, they uh, have the chat box open, and they ask whatever question there was, right? Like, is this going to arrive in time for my father's birthday or whatever it is. Um, this will massively increase uh, the click-through rates on your uh, abandoned cart emails. It will also massively increase the conversions from that because it takes that, that asynchronous medium of an email uh, and it takes that typical email that people get. They know they're getting the reminder and the discounts. Every store does this. Um, but it turns that into an engagement and a conversation and a real time conversation, which causes it to perform way better. Um, the only issue with this one is you really do need to be 24 seven on chat with your team to make this work. Um, there's certain things you can kind of do to get around that experience and, you can time your emails or maybe do a dynamic call to action, but it's messy if you get the emails right saying that we're online, chat with us, and then people click on it and they're not online, it makes your conversions on those emails go down. Um, so definitely something to look at if you're doing 24 seven, but um, uh, adding in live chat as a CTA works really well. And I wanna also be clear, this works phenomenally on other uh, emails. So your other lifecycle emails, subscription, upsells, reorders, all that type of stuff, um, all of that works really well uh, also. So that's the last way that live chat really moves the needle. Um, so key things to look at implementing um, is basically use chat in the checkout process, whether you're on Shopify Plus or WooCommerce or all these other platforms, um, you uh, use live chat in the checkout process, predict if somebody's gonna abandon and engage with them, you'll get a lot more sales like that. Uh, second thing is time chat invites really well based on product engagement. That's gonna enable you to get a lot more people uh, to move from product and category pages straight into the actual uh, checkout process. Uh, and then that third one is uh, add live chat as a CTA in your uh, Clavio emails as a call to action.
I want to touch on uh, one more thing. This is something that Derek and I went into on, uh, on another session before that I wanted to, to spend a moment on. Um, to, again, to be clear, like we do this for clients. We know that that's, that's uh, you know, part of the marketing spiel, I guess. But uh, you should absolutely be doing live chat. Uh, don't do it with us, but make sure you do it. Like that's kind of what I'm saying. Um, but there are a couple mistakes that are like super critical to make sure that you don't make. Cause live chat is one of these, um, maybe one of the only marketing tactics, I'm not sure. Um, but it's the type of marketing tactic that if you do it poorly, it doesn't just not work. It causes your conversion rate to go down. So it will make you go backwards. And the reason for that is people that would have bought without chat, they will engage with the chat you'll have some of these mistakes going on and, and uh, they'll get to a point where it interrupts their purchase flow or it frustrates them for some reason and they leave. So a certain portion of people that would have bought without the chat even being there in the first place will leave because of the chat. Uh, so super important to get these things uh, right. Number one, do not use pre-chat forms. Do not put friction in front of somebody uh, before they can ask a question. Uh, this is the equivalent uh, of, you know, a brick and mortar store, like somebody's walking around, they walk up to an employee and they say, I have a question, like, I'm wondering if I can get this, you know, shipped to my house, whatever the question is. Um, employee stays silent, hands them a piece of paper and says, fill this out. Or maybe they, it says fill it out on the paper. I don't know. It makes them fill something out before they can talk to somebody and get help. You would never do that offline. Don't do it online either. There are other ways in the actual chat to segment uh, people, to collect contact information, to get order information, all those types of things. And frankly, there's ways you can do this in a fairly automated way too. You can do it on the front end with bots, make it look like a human, you can get pretty crazy with it. I don't think that's worth the investment, frankly, uh, unless like you're in this business and you're pretty sophisticated with the tech. Um, but bottom line, don't put pre-chat forms because it, it's a, a friction in front of people and it will cause people that will see the chat box to click it, see that form, and it's just a slight interruption, but it does impact your conversion rate when you look at bigger numbers. Second one is more important, frankly, uh, and that's first response time. Uh, that's the initial response time. So it's the amount of time between uh, someone sending a chat to you and your team responding. That might mean that they're replying to a greeting that you gave them where it said, do you have any questions I can help with? It's automated. They say, actually, yes, I'm wondering when this is gonna ship. The time between them asking that question and your, your team responding is the first response time. Absolutely critical for that to be under 10 seconds. 10 to 12 seconds is a massive break point for the conversion rate of the people that engage with chat. And again, and it gets worse if you do the greetings well. So if you time your greetings perfectly, they think it's a real person. It's not, it's automated, or it should be. Um, they think it's a real person, they engage, they stop, and they wait. And if they have to wait longer than 10 to 12 seconds, it's a massive drop in conversion rate for that cohort. You wanna keep that uh, first response time under 10 seconds, and then you wanna keep that conversation going. The average response time varies depending on a ton of stuff, so I won't go into that right now. But just keep the conversation moving, let, let them know what the status is. Uh, first response time matters a lot. Last piece, and then I'm going to wrap up, is uh, nights and weekends. There is a ton of traffic on your site on nights and weekends. Uh, what we typically see is over 50% of traffic comes outside of business hours, so on nights and weekends. Um, and that's across the board. Uh, even if you're a B2B site, uh, it's on the lower end of over 50%, but it's still a lot of visitors. So really, really important to be, uh, be there on nights and weekends because when you get chat right, it drives a lot of conversions and you don't want to miss those conversions. And in some cases, the conversion rate is actually much higher on chat on nights and weekends or specifically on nights. When people get an invite at 11 p.m. at night, they assume it's automated, but they still ask their question and they're like ecstatic when the chat goes well and, and they get their answers. So definitely something to look into. As a resource uh, for everyone, um, I wanted to share the live chat blueprint. Um, like I mentioned, uh, we run live chat for over 100 e-commerce stores. Uh, we've been doing this for six years, tons of chats, tons of chat revenue. Uh, we know how to do this stuff. Uh, if you're doing over 30K a month, it might make sense to do a strategy call where basically we, we will essentially go through this exercise with your data. So we'll get into your Google Analytics, we'll see your abandonment rates, we'll see the cohort size, all that type of stuff. And we'll say, okay, like, you know, here's the approach that would work really well in your case with live chat. Here's the timing of your greetings uh, that would make sense. And so um, I'm super happy to have a call with anybody, frankly, that wants to have that call. Um, not a salesy process. It's just the same thing we did today with your numbers. But uh, I also wanted to put something together for, for Derek's team here and for everybody. Um, 
that is valuable, you know, whether you work with us or not. And that's the live chat blueprint. Um, it basically goes into uh, more tactical ways to use live chat, not just with cart abandons, but with things like, you know, what should the greeting say? Um, you know, what's the right schedule to be on chat if you can't do 24 seven, like what's the typical breakdown of traffic and, and responses um, on chats. And so uh, there's a link here on the screen. You can go to that link. We've also got a fancy text message system set up. If you uh, send uh, the word help flow is one word to 415-528-7403. Uh, you can see it on the screen. This is a super simple way to, uh, to get that live chat blueprint in. But hopefully this has been helpful for you guys. Uh, live chat will drive a ton of sales for you. And uh, Q4 is, is gonna be really big. And so you wanna be able to maximize those opportunities. Yeah, I love it. And I, I, you hammered home the point and the value of, of those conversations. And I think that number one question that everyone or you know the qualm they have with live chat is like, I can't do that. That'll be way too many inquiries. It'll flood my customer service. And then you say, look, just focus on key engagement moments. Enable live chat when this happens, when that happens. Do it one element at a time. It won't overwhelm your support team or your, you know, and it will, you'll, you'll see the revenue come in from it. And I think that's a really intelligent way to roll this out. And ironically, I don't think 90% of major e-commerce merchants are, are using live chat in that intelligent way. They're, they're either doing it one of the two ways, which is giving it to everybody, very, very common, or uh, just actually having it there and, and then it going straight to email, which is, uh, sadly still very very common um, yep. so I, I have questions for you but we're out of time um, no so perhaps we'll, we'll ask them in chat or we'll, we'll have people follow up with you individually uh, to ask questions to you and to your team thank you so much John amazing presentation as always and I love those uh, don't do these mistakes uh, because I think we all need a little bit of guidance when it comes to um, implementing what seems like a really simple idea just add this widget to your site and then you go well how do I do this intelligently? And you are the guy to talk to when it comes to that. So thanks for uh, showing us how to do it. Awesome. Thank you guys. Have a good Q4. Take care.